Molweni Ndingubongani and thank you so much for coming to Alternatives to Small. Pamba ndinge ne kui video ya namkla anje ndifunu kuti to each and every single person who is subscribed to my channel. Thank you so much. I appreciate you so much. And inge la lena ndi ni tanda ngayo, ndi ni tabise ngayo, ndi ni sulipi ngayo. Like, I make sure that every time I am here sitting in front of this camera that I am bringing, you know, my best foot forward. I am bringing it. I am trying. I am improving. One as long as I was in Doman, like I just want to put that out there. Even something as simple as how I present myself to you guys. Like I'm always making sure that you know what, like vuka kelu aine, vuku aine la week no ba uyindao. Like just because like he. And yes, man, guys, did you only pick a cool and um also did you only pick a cool while the platform got alternatives to small. Anyway, um, let me get straight into the video because one thing about me, as you know, guys. Okay, so today's video is a book discussion, and the book that I will be discussing is Ya Giyasi's Transcendent Kingdom. Anyway, so Glenwadi, which is beautifully written, we are introduced to the main character, Ukipti, um, when she was a little girl. So Gifty is a daughter of two immigrant parents who moved from Ghana to America. You know, Beyo Zama Ubomo Ubedere for Mdana Wabo Wokala, which was Unana. Um, I mentioned that because Glen Nuclear family of four, um, the circumstances of how the um, the children came into the world were different. With Unana, you know, um, the parents were married for a while, the mother wasn't conceiving, and at some point she was even telling the father that, you know what, I would understand if maybe some elsewhere in London because I think, you know, maybe and whatever. And by the time that um, Unana came to Africa, um, he was like, you know, this miracle baby, Apple, ye ay, Abazali Bake, you know, and um, Abazali Bake emtanda to such an extent that they literally crossed the ocean for Unan. And then with Ukifti, um, circumstances were a bit um, different. Um, when Ukifti came, Umama Wake was 40 years old. So by that time, they were definitely not like planning for a child, not expecting a child. And also life in America was proving to, you know, not be that American dream. Like life was expensive. And so, yeah. And growing up, Ukifti felt that. And, you know, I fault Umama Wake because sometimes even in the things that she would say to Ukifti, she would complain about like um, her pregnancy with Ukifti. But you know, like and all of those things. But again, nevertheless, you know, um solid nuclear family. Um and then Gifty was like a very smart, very brilliant, sweet little girl. Um and Gengoku, the first guru guru that happens. Oh, Baowam. Yo, I don't know if I'm giving too, in fact, even if I'm giving too much information. Um, the father who was working as a janitor, um, Ebeso Yisakala Bubum America, um, he couldn't do it anymore, you know, um, and he wanted to move back home. And so the parents would constantly fight about this. And I think it just got to a point where Latata was like, you know what, I am leaving. And um, his absence you know, brought about so much pain and confusion and umko with family structure. Um, I remember a scene where Ukifti was describing um, how her father left as being cowardly because La Tata Unke is city of visitor, brother AIK in Ghana, and he literally never came back. Um, but yeah, and then Gifty's older brother, Unana, a um, very charismatic boy, um, very athletic. We are time domana kui neighborhood na says call when you get land. Like Abanda and Abala Mama Shame, they were pretty good children. Um, but I think Kengoku um German Imeko Ukushala Ungabina Dad and everything impacted the boy differently and he turned to drugs. Um we were seven this is your BC and he was quite heavily addicted to drugs and then um Uma Maya now um had a depression. But then the mother was, you know, like your strong African mother, very Christian, very strong and stuff. And there were scenes in the book where La Mama, um, she refused to acknowledge a depression or to recognize Lendo Ebe Pila or Ebe Ebe Kowisha through Yona as being like an illness. And she was like, you know what? No, that's a white woman thing. That's an American television thing. Of course, such thing. And also 
get gamma because they were like Christians, get gamma, I rebuke, I call quantum meeting. Um, and then the story progresses. Oh, guys, it's such a beautiful story. I don't want to give too much away. Story progresses and um, oh, Gifty grows up and now she's a young woman. And as I said, well, she's smart and everything. And she then decided um, to study neuroscience and she was accepted. Um, and then it is progressing. And then she's doing her PhD in neuroscience um, at Stanford University. Um, then Kangoko, oh, this is my favorite part. Kangoko, I see when it climax your story in a way is now she gets to Stanford and um, we call that juxtaposition, guys. I always wanted to use that word. Uh, if okay, I'm my sevens, I will. Um, we call that juxtaposition now because now she is studying the sciences where she has to interrogate things, she has to question things. There are methods to things. Oh, hypothesis, in don don, we prove wrong, we prove right, all of that. Um, and then can go with her background um, as a Christian, where you know, Ukule believing in the mysteries of God, and and the and the you don't question into a stealer, you don't question wow, don't 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 don't. And um, things can go in her personal life, family life, and everything. Got like really bad. Also, guys, I forgot to mention. Um, and I think Yona thing that ties into Lingwatu and Yona main don don. Um, first of all, I had to Google what transcendent means. Um, and um, it's I'll try to put something here, but I probably won't because editing is not my thing. Um, but it means like to go beyond limitations as ten ten. So um. Because Libali Lomdana who transcended uh Ganyo went beyond all of the limitations of a life that was not particularly kind to her, right? And I mentioned that because your kukum ko manum means and lam ko is not doesn't feel dramatic. It's it's the things that a person goes through a Um and so anyway, can at some point, Ken Ukifti decides to stop going to church. Um, and I think her connection with God, I mean, with Jesus, um, it's sort of, you know, it go away a bit because she was going through a lot. Her brother's addiction, her mother's depression, life in general, and even at school, in as much as she was this brilliant PhD candidate, she was one of the few black people in her department. She doubted her own intelligence. And the book really educated me in terms of how racism can be very structural. And um, Uu Gifty internalized a lot of that. And Iwef ya ke enga ibo ni man and and um a sidelined man even with group projects she would like lose marks because of her participation but the reason she wasn't participating a lot was because there's like cultural differences between her and her group mates and like my am kare and man and because she was like quiet and shy and don't don't you know it's in man type of thing so um life was just yeah and then um <clears throat> she had grown up as a good girl and she always tried to do the right thing and she was uh, like a christian and she she read the bible cover to cover yeah well, um what i enjoyed also is how she spoke about like um her relationship with jesus and also um just basically christianity at some points like i was just laughing um and i liked how it being a quite dista distasteful you know where someone um you know how normally people who don't believe in christ it, it's but she got to a point where she was like okay at first when life was really really bad and she still believed she was like um this is the same god who who has risen the dead okay, the same jesus and this you know is the jesus of miracles and don't don't and his ways are not our ways and if he was able to you know, a kupa bandu as nakines and duenes and duena vusa bandu fen in like yam surely utiko uzagun uzagu uzagu in eta. And um, the story progresses, and like God doesn't really show himself kakulu in her life, and she felt that, and she felt very, I think, disappointed. Um, um, and wa wa peke la kutiko, and there's even scenes where she's like this grace that everyone talks about you know i haven't experienced it for myself and there's a scene where she's at church um and you know the way man like is like 
there are those amongst us today um, who are sitting here with heavy hearts, amen. There are those amongst us today whose crosses are too heavy to bear, amen. But I am telling you today, and she was sitting there with a heavy heart, with a cross that literally was too heavy to um, to bear, and still a finishing at a uh uh so okay anyway okay, yeah that's gifty moving away from christianity and stuff and i liked the fact that inga kangi babe because of the sciences it was just she was observing her life and she was like eh, uh, uh, and the Anyway, um, yo, man, it's such a beautifully written book. Um, not personally, I, I enjoy a good love story. <laughs> I really do. And so, um, in Varsity, she meets this guy who was studying, um, I think literature, but I don't know, he was in the humanities. So, you know, they were different. Um, I know his research was on like protest movements and stuff. And sometimes when they would be talking about their PhD research, um, Ukifti would sort of water down what it is she's doing and simplify it. And then Yati landlord, Yati la African king. But why do you do that? And she was like, Why do I do what? And he was like, Um, why do you why lay research for Kautetanga? You tell me, Jalo, Kanjenga, yo, um, I told me, Ah, no, I'm like, it's complicated. And so I'm trying, I didn't know it's quite complicated. Even Benzima, even better, you and it teta can cool on to Kwanga. We own it. Stop like, Uzambe was accommodated. Tina, do you know? So I, I found that very romantic. I don't know why. Um, um, but again. Yeah what happens um so the story progresses story progresses story pro oh her research topic and just generally research like, is also like a big part of the story and listen guys i am not a sciencey person i am not a numbers person i'm not and as we talk we left brain right near right brain I don't know, yay, PE, but I'm the one, or oh, I'm more like your emotional, I'm more your memory subjects and stuff. So, but the way that this book was written, it was just so beautifully written. Anyway, and I even wrote like a piece here so that thing I take into Zumbala one. E research topic, I give Um, ETE, the research question or whatever i don't know what it's called but the old team could optogenetics be used to identify the neural mechanisms involved in psychiatric illnesses where there are issues with reward seeking ne? so um I, and and i think what inspired her research was deeper and deeper down that addiction um um hole to a point where kanga kwazu save from you now you know and no mama wake went deeper and deeper to a point where mama ke benga kwazu no pagame peting nenge na yo iwele yo pagama e peting and so she wanted to um i guess maybe use science or kanye ayenze like meaningful work to answer some of the questions this dress i don't know guys as i said i'm not good at science so bear with me i take a look up at it in case come on my career depression i because and the topic is is about reward seeking near restraint i took a look at my wife there was not um there was too much restraint in reward seeking with the depression and then with Upu Tuake who was addicted to e is your PC, there was not enough restraint to reward seeking to feeling like it's not a drug or whatever. Ne? And so she conducted her research in a lab and then um so she you know in science mostly they conduct these experiments like on e research yeah okay, was conducted on mice and she basically trained the mice to seek reward right so we let Bianke um we go like this clear old structure thing and a lever as well as a tube right so every time in mice she trained the mice to like we lever go put my chocolate down the tube whatever and so soon enough you know they got the hang of it and then change the condition the conditions right and so now she 
um instead of like buzzed off a pakupumi chocolate all the time we introduce like a mild food shock so in bugoka you figure it off the payana um it could either get like e chocolate or a food shock and then another interesting thing is that she randomized the shock that way the mice um wouldn't like figure out the pattern um and um so again we could call like three different responses to this experiment like as in book like um the first response is like um yeah, in book of Payana, it's all faith money food shock. Like, if money chocolate, I pin this year, if money food shock, and then it go away and it doesn't go to the lever again. And then, um, the second response in book, yeah, if money chocolate, yeah, it's all gave money chocolate, yeah, and then it money see ya with Ella Temple. But you know what, this time, um, Dinga Fumana, um some chocolate and then eventually peddling a manja and it's like a wrap and then there's the third response the third group of mice and that was um gifty's um particular like um research interest ma Ah, ba kanye as mbuku ziti zisiya every single time. Doesn't matter. No bazi fumani shock. No bazi fumani chocolate. But they keep going because they want that reward. And some would like get limbs. You can't any that even died and stuff. Like what happens in the brain? Um, in the uh, uti ukuwisha through as a zin. Do two years, but all your offer pa. There's a high chance you ba uzabuya kupshung da kabab, but you still go. Um, and I found that so interesting. And I liked how in the storytelling, especially when it got to in the bio research here, I can science and everything. She didn't like water it down for the reader like when she was re making references to academic journals um and that sort of thing like she was one christina yang and you google it and i but it didn't get to the point where ube lost it because i guess of how beautifully the book is written but anyway what i liked about that and like yeah nigga la aha moment is you know but isn't that really how it is with us as humans as well like we go through things we experience challenges and all of these things and there are those who but they takale once and they bang us baba pinde bapakamne um and then kubeko ah baba betakala baba nebe zama but at some point bapelelwe nga mantla and then there are those people who you know no bunga bek and doni pam kwa baby challenge nga tini um do ya presses and stuff oh also then unenye i lab um i research partner in the lab of Tuang Wuhan. Oh, Wuhan. Yo, as I said, I love a good romance story. Um, but it wasn't oh, even get cold because as I said, she had this other guy she was dating. But Wuhan, if you call like chemistry, yeah, not as the character, like in the story, she wasn't like vibing with Han or anything. They were like literally just working. But as the reader, I was rooting for Wuhan. I'm like, that's your man. That's your man. That's the person who gets you. That's the person who accepts you. But it's a Um. Anyway, story progresses, and um. Unfortunately, like go and say, and just do ezimbi a booming bike or gifty. And at some point, she neglects herself. Um. She isn't eating right. She. I think she had like a bit of a wall. Um. And she distanced abandu um she didn't have a lot of friends and in cases where she would she would quickly i guess self-sabotage and obviously a lot of that has to do with her upbringing and her experiences and everything and it was just like ugh. and then Gyoku, there's a point where one of her friends um Gifty, what what are your goals? What do you want from life and and stuff like that? And like in the moment, she gives like a vague response. She taps around um, the question and stuff, and it was fine. But Gengoku, there's a point in the story where she has to confront herself and she has to like really think about what it is she wants. And that part, it it took me out completely, and I I was moved, and I was really just inspired. I'm not gonna lie, what I was a inspired. beautifully written book, ten out of ten. Like and Naz Kalazo, like what a beautifully written book. And um, I want to read like some of the so called blurbs. This is in those lapemva. Sipalanga banya bantu about the book, but um, U N. Uti, I'm going to be the fanga and sorry and Uti, I would say that Transcendent Kingdom is a novel for our time, and it is, but it is so much more than that. It is a novel for all times. The splendor and heart and insight and brilliance.
sentence contained in the pages holds up a light the rest of us can follow. And I promise you, nyani, like Nintendo and I was like, you know what? We are your yonke indoor that numb as a person I have faced, I am facing all of my yonke, yonke, go bunja lobayo. Um, I can still, okanye, there is still that light, ekum, nobody itim kanga kana nina ngoko, but that I can still delight and really follow my heart and really trust myself and really just, you know, go ahead and dream big. Do you hit me? Um, yeah, so that's what this book did for me. To the end of this book discussion, I really hope that you enjoyed this video so much for watching this video. Um, and I will see you on my next upload.